Never mind, I wasn't talking about that. Well, I'm just glad I have Mason. I don't have to worry about all this stuff. I'm just find somebody for Mary Jo. Thank you very much, but I am happy with my life just like it is. Well, I think it's time for a change. Suzanne, who cares about what you think? It's Mary Jo's life. I know, but since I do know the most men, I feel it's my responsibility to fix her up. Let me relieve you of that responsibility. I swear to you, Suzanne, I'm not interested. My prime goal in life is to find you a date, Mary Jo, and I will leave no stone unturned. Well, that should make it easy. After all, that's where you find most of yours. <laughs> No, just Ed McMahon saying I may have already won a million dollars in one of those sweepstakes. How exciting. You'll probably want to call your family right away. <laughs> you know, these things always make me feel so guilty. I always send back the envelope that says no, but enter me in your sweepstakes anyway. I mean, if I won, how could I ever face those people? Oh, come on. That doesn't matter. I mean, it always says no purchase necessary. Well, sure, they have to, but you know they hate your guts if you never order a single one of their magazines. <laughs> I just had this silly, irrational fear that one night Ed's gonna turn to Johnny and say, well, Charlene Frazier sent back the no envelope again. Boy, has that woman got gall. Well, good morning, troops. I just had the most wonderful brunch. I went to Atlanta Stadium with Trammell Jennings. You know, we're old friends. There we were in his private and closed box with TV and champagne. I didn't know they had games out there in the morning. They don't. He wants his seats reupholstered, so I just went to have a look. <laughs> One thing led to another, and the next thing I know, we're having quiche. So oh, I that reminds me of the story. <laughs> These friends of my parents are not very sophisticated, bless their hearts. And one night, they went to this real fancy restaurant, and they ordered quiche off the menu. Only they called it a quickie! <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, you're joking. I'm not. It was a hoot. <laughs> Charlene, you always do this. I was building up to something. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, build away. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, Trammell and I are sitting there talking at the stadium, and right in the middle of him telling me how I'm probably the most attractive woman who's ever sat in his box, in walks J.D. Shackelford. So? Who's J.D. Shackelford? Oh, you know. He's the head person who goes around scouting talent for the Braves. I know him when my ex-husband, Jack, played second base. So, anyway, J.D. and I start to talking, and I find out he's available, and I immediately think of you. <laughs> oh, no. What's the catch? I mean, why aren't you going out with him yourself? Because I don't want to go out with him. I've known him too long. Anyway, he's darling and funny and recently divorced, and you'll just love him. Recently divorced? Oh, no. Now I know I'm not going. Now, what is the matter with that? You're recently divorced, too. Yes, I know, but men are different when they've just gotten out of a marriage. They've got something to prove. They're macho and crazy and nuts, and they all talk about their ex-wives, and they've all got to have sex on the first date, and frankly, I just don't think I'm up to it. No, no, count me out. Not now, maybe not ever. <laughs> So, you're J.D. Shackelford. Well, Mr. Shackelford, you have certainly got yourself a handful of woman tonight. And we are gonna rock and roll and lose control because you are man and I am woman. W-O-M-A-N, I'll say it again. And I'll say amen. Gee, it's just been great seeing you again. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, I guess it's time to ask the big question. Will you go with me to my class reunion? Howard, why me? I hardly know you. I know, I thought that's why maybe you would go. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, I, I really appreciate it, but I date someone. Well, that's okay. I mean, I promise I'll never bother you again. This is a one-time deal, please. You don't know how much this means to me. I mean, all through school, they made fun of me. And then at my 10-year reunion, I didn't even have a date. And then when I met you on that cruise ship, oh, and I found out you lived here, I've been thinking about it for weeks. I mean, you are my ideal woman. You've got everything. You're great looking, you're funny, you're sweet. And I've just been waiting to stick it to those people for such a long, long time. Howard, stop, really. 
You're just going about this all wrong. I mean, going to a high school reunion with me isn't going to change your life. Look, just, just don't say no yet, please. Just promise me you'll think about it. Oh, and I insist on paying you. Yes! <laughs> Not that that would obligate you to anything besides a date. However, I would make the check out for more if you just told them that you had sex with me. <laughs> But you'd only have to say that to certain people I have on a list. Howard, I don't want your money. You'd be my date for free? Yes, of course. I mean, if I was going to be your date, but I can't really. I mean, it's nuts. Well, I've got to give him my final answer by 4 o'clock. Your final answer? You told him no 50 times. Yeah, I know, but at lunch he kind of started crying a little. I mean, I think he was crying. It was hard to tell with all that tissue stuck all over his face. But... I think he was crying. I just hate it when men cry, especially on the first date. <laughs> you need me, I'll be in the storeroom. I was just thinking about this time in seventh grade. You know, I was just at that gangly, awkward time when you're all teeth and ears. Remember that stage? No. How about all teeth and knockers? <laughs> Mary Jo! It's just a joke. Anyway, I'll never forget how that felt. I was so humiliated. Nobody asked me to the Valentine's dance. Tell me something, Claudia. You promise you had car trouble last night? Yes. Why? Because I wouldn't want you to lie to me. I'm not. Good, then I won't lie to you. You know, I've always tried to act very hip and progressive about the facts of life and you starting to date and all that, but you know, the truth is, I'm not very hip. And I don't care how much you like somebody or how much you, you know about what precautions to take. I just plain don't want you to have sex with anybody right now because you know you're only young once. And I want you to be that way just as long as possible. And if you just make the simple decision not to, period, then you just don't have to think about it anymore. And I know that you may think that this is unfair for me to ask, but I just want you to trust me on this. And you know, if I'm wrong, then you can just hate me for the rest of your life. <laughs> Mom, I know you don't want me to have sex. How do you know that? Because I'm not stupid. Anyways, I never think of you as hip. <laughs> you don't? Oh, I know you're old-fashioned. I'm old-fashioned, too. Sex is something I just wouldn't consider until college. And then it has to be someone I love. Thank you. How did I get so lucky? Although I do neck. I don't want to know about it. I've got to run. You know, you've got all my friends fools. They all think you're very cool. I mean, even Ben and Mindy were just saying how they wish their mothers could be more like you. Do you know Mindy's mom even followed her on a date one time? I mean, she actually took the car out and tailed her. Can you imagine? Yeah. I'm so glad you're not like that. Yeah, me too. And I'm real glad you're my daughter. Goodbye, Mom. Love you. Bye. Love you. Don't have sex. Well, well, I have the name of the best breast man in Atlanta right here. He did B.B. Benson, and no one at the Miss Georgia pageant even knew till I turned her in. Now, <laughs> you have the number here if you want it, but I don't think you have the nerve. I can't believe she's doing this. Mary Jo, did you know a Pan Am stewardess had hers done and they exploded during takeoff? <laughs> Mary Jo? Hmm? Did you by any chance have surgery last night? Oh, you mean these? No. No, this is just a, a prosthetic bra. Dr. Hogue wants me to try out several different sizes to see what I feel comfortable with. What do you think? Well, I, I, I don't know, Mary Jo. I, I just can't believe it's you. Well, it's not, but it's gonna be. Guess what? I found out this operation cost exactly $3,000. I mean, it is almost like Uncle Dude wanted me to have them. Oh, you think he had his eye on you? No, silly. I mean, you know, it was just like it was meant to be. What do you think, Julie? You like them? Oh, Mary Jo, they're different. It takes getting used to. Go ahead. 
Feel them. Oh, uh, that's all right. No, no, come on. This is almost the consistency of what I'll be getting. I mean, go ahead. Mary Jo, I'll feel them some other time, okay? <laughs> but thank you for asking. Well, Charlene, you feel them. Now? Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I want to know what you think. Well, okay. Oh. Excuse me, I'll just be taking these in the back. Don't they feel real? No, they feel creepy. Oh, that's just because you've never felt them before. This is the newest material. They just came out with this. These are what you might call the 89 models. What do you think, Suzanne? Well, they're okay, if you like that size. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, I can't be your size. It wouldn't fit my frame. For heaven's sake, I'd look like an oil rig. <laughs> well, I just think you should get your money's worth, that's all. Don't worry, I will. As a matter of fact, I have some a couple of sizes larger that I'm gonna change into after work. What's after work? Well, I thought you and I might go to Gallagher's and have a drink. Why me? Why can't you get J.D. to take it? Well, J.D. is in Cincinnati at a baseball meeting. And besides, I don't want to go with a man. I mean, I need to try these out in a social setting, you know, and I can't go with Charlene or Suzanne because then I wouldn't know if people were responding to mine or theirs. I see. Well, I couldn't ask for a more insulting invitation than that. Oh, now, come on, Julia, I didn't mean it that way. I know what you meant. There are all kinds of bosoms floating around out there, Mary Jo, and I don't think it's gonna matter one way or the other when you walk into Gallagher's. You are so wrong. People treat you completely differently, even women. Like this morning at the bank, there's this woman teller in there who's usually very rude. Well, I just walked right in there and plopped them right up there on the counter. <laughs> And it intimidated the heck out of her. She had a whole new look of respect on her face. Mary Jo, I think your imagination is working overtime. Speaking of which, you and Suzanne are 15 minutes late getting to Margaret Revelle. I know, I know. Just let me finish. Then, then I went into Denny's to order myself a cup of coffee, and three waiters slid into home plate just trying to get it for me. Mary Jo, you are like a kid with a new toy. I know I am. You know, I think these things are supposed to make you feel more feminine, but they make me feel aggressive, you know, kind of macho-like. I tell you, if I go up to a D-cup, I think I could get into a fist fight. Are you ready? Let's just let me get my purse. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Mary Jo. Uh, that's a lovely sweater. Is that new? As a matter of fact, it is. Well, it's very nice. Thank you. Going on. Mary Jo's pregnant. <laughs> Speech! Speech! I think I've made the biggest mistake of my life. Thank you for coming. Mm -mm. I just can't sleep. It's all right, Mary Jo. You feeling any better now? I don't know. I spent most of the night in the bathroom, did about a hundred of those pregnancy tests. Every single one of them. I'm really pregnant. Well, isn't that what you wanted? Well, I, I thought that's what I wanted. I just, I don't think I thought that it would happen this fast. Do you realize I don't even know what the father looks like? What if he has a terrible sense of humor? Passed on to the baby. What if he thinks Benny Hill is funny? <laughs> what then, huh? Oh, what am I gonna do? Hey, Joe. Gonna be okay. Just remember you raised Claudia and Quint practically all by yourself. How yeah, well they turn down. Yeah, I know. Oh, Julie. 
I just think I've been so cavalier. Six months ago, I blurted out, oh, I want a baby. And now I'm gonna have one. I'm so scared. Mary Jo, I'm gonna tell you something. Hayden and I were planning to have another child when he had his first heart attack. And once he had recovered, he was all ready to try again. But knowing that his health was precarious, I, I decided that I just couldn't face the possibility that I'd have to bring up that baby without him. I love pain more than anything in the world, but oh, how I wanted another child. I gave up that possibility out of fear. It was a deep disappointment to Hayden. And Mary Jo is the only thing in my life that I will always regret. No idea. Well, I'm telling you now. And what I'm telling you is, don't let fear keep you from having this thing you know you want so much. Will you promise me that every time I get wimpy, you'll just slap me around? <laughs> no, I, I mean it. I'm gonna need you there with me every step of the way. Oh. <laughs> you got me. You got me. Of course, I may have to arm wrestle Carlene to see who gets to cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> took the stairs, I'll be finding him. Hey, just a minute, come here. No! Back up, buddy. Lay a finger on me and I'll kick you so hard your whole family will feel it. Get away! Hey, okay. me out of the elevator and he touched me and I just let him have it. Mary Jo? Yeah, he went away. I didn't panic. I went into position. I yelled, no! I didn't freeze. I didn't panic one bit. I just heard all of you cheering me on. Mary Jo! Oh, it was great. I wasn't embarrassed at all. I didn't cave in. I just knew when he came right down to it that I was worth fighting for and I wasn't embarrassed. Mary Jo, I'm so Proud of you. Oh, that's that's DP LaBeouf. I, he's coming to town early. I'm taking him out to dinner tonight. I was going to tell him you weren't going to New Orleans, but now I can tell him with you that you are. Hello, Julia. Hi, Mr. LaBeouf. Mary Jo, this is the gentleman we've been talking about for so long. We've met. Now I'm embarrassed. In the elevator over at the parking garage. I thought I recognized you from the picture in the magazine. Oh, Mr. LaBeouf, I... I'm so sorry. I've been taking this course Mrs. And... Shively, I have a mother, I have a wife, I have two daughters. I should know better than to go up to a strange woman in a deserted parking garage, even if I thought I recognized her. What you did was great! Oh, thank you. A lot of men would have been mad at me. Mad? <laughs> Don't be silly. I was terrified. <laughs> but seriously, don't sell us men too short, Miss Shively. Any decent male who cares about women and their safety is not going to get mad at you for defending it. That's right. You ought to be proud of yourself, Mary Jo. Well, I am. I'm proud I mistook you for a low-life scum mugger. <laughs> That's the spirit. 
<laughs> and I'm proud I threatened to kick you senseless. You bet. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I would have been very proud if I had kicked you senseless. Mary Jane, <laughs> what? Save something for graduation day. <laughs>